Hello, this is actually take two on this. I, I have to keep it briefer. Um, I was talking about my version of economics. My version of economics is um, perhaps not completely original, and uh, if I'm plagiarizing somebody, I apologize. But I wanted to talk about what is the natural form of economics, and that, I would say, is capitalism, is the most natural form of economics that exists within a large society, within a society that's got crossroads and permanent settlements and so forth. And what is in opposition to that is socialism, which is, uh, I believe, a form of technology. And I believe that um, Karl Marx's comment that all politics is economics, I think, was completely correct. All, I'm not a Marxist, though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we cannot stop capitalism as a form of economics in this world today is at least under the current uh, emotional and uh, moral standards of the current human condition. It, it just is a natural form of economics that exists and has always existed in, in civilization. You know, if you, I, I remember I, I'm talking about some guy I saw that um, was in this debate at my college and he was talking very Marxist-like about how the most natural form of economics, he said, is socialism. Because in the early hunter-gatherer societies, that's what they did, each according to his needs and each according to his abilities. But in reality, there's no proof of that. You know, the most early form of history that's ever been recorded was the cuneiforms that they wrote down in the Mesopotamia, which were... The earliest form of cuneiforms they have are ledgers for uh, people who were keeping accounts on someone's storage bins. So, in other words, the earliest form of history is a capitalist record. So, you know, that kind of shows that capitalism goes back to the very beginning of history. And uh, there's also, uh, I, I'm not that socialism doesn't exist somewhere along the line almost contrary to that uh, throughout most history as well. But I believe that, you know, when you're in your front yard and you listen to the robins singing and you think, oh, he sings beautifully, you know, you think it's just that he's doing it for pleasure. But actually what he's doing is he's telling all the other male robins to stay off of his private property because it's a natural form of economics to have private property to make a profit so that you can have enough worms you know, to, to feed your brood so that you can pr profit into the future and, and send your family into their adulthood. So it, it's a really natural system, capitalism. That doesn't always make it the perfect system or the only system that we ought to have. And we, socialism, on the contrary, is a form of technology. It's man-made. It, it occurs, man conceives of socialism. Man has to design socialist systems. And, you know, I, I point out, in my opinion anyway, all governments are socialistic by at least a little bit because in order to fund the government, you got to tax the people or tax the merchants or put a tariff on things or put a, you know, charge license or whatever. The government makes money to exist. Now, what, what happens in history is... Um, Generally, capitalism uh, works uh, in several ways. But one way that it, that it works in is that the, over the course of time, all the political power and all the economic power gets concentrated into fewer and fewer hands so that an oligarchy automatically arises in the capitalist system. You know, we see this happening in history. Uh, the crowned heads of Europe, uh, they were the ones like Louis the Fourteenth or King George the Third. you know, they were not only the, the most politically powerful people in their, in their realm, they were also the wealthiest people in their realm. So what happens often is that, you know, the people that have the power have the money, and the people who have the money have the power. It's, it's, it's an oligarchy that arises. Now, at the same time, um, the American Revolution, I know a lot of people don't want to think this, was 
partially a socialist revolution. Because what it did is it said no taxation without representation. That also means that um, that those who have all the money cannot be the only ones who make a decision about how much we get taxed. You know, they 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 want a spreading out of the wealth, in other words, so that we can decide ourselves here in the United States how much we get taxed and how much the government has control. Because what inevitably happens is, it, what comes first? Is it the uh, government takes over and tells you you have to give them all their money, or is it the people with all the money take over the government? You know, that I, I think uh, generally the the as I say, capitalism being the most natural system and the one that's ancient, it's generally the people with all the money end up taking over the government. You know, uh, see, people don't look at it that way. But uh, it, it, what it also means is that when I say capitalism is the most natural system, it means that it cannot be stopped. You cannot, it, it's a force of nature. You know, you can't say we're going to get rid of capitalism or we're, you know, like Marx had in mind to get rid of capitalism because it, it never will happen. In the darkest days of Stalinist Russia, there was capitalism in Russia. They had the black market, which was the most efficient way to receive certain goods. They had um, the leaders of the country still pushing little forms of capitalism in order to prime the pump, as they said. They, they never got rid of capitalism within the Soviet Union completely. And that's one of the reasons why the Soviet Union fell, because they came to realize that the most efficient way we can distribute things is through capitalism. They realized that after 80 years. So where we're at now in the United States is we see some people who have who have gotten all this money, and right around 1968 or so, um, they started to say, hmm, how is it that we have all the money, but we have no, none of the power? I mean, they have the unions now are demanding that they have, you know, pensions and time and a half overtime and unemployment compensation and, uh, you know, minimum wage and things like that. And, you know, the corporations are losing. And, and the rich people are saying, how is it possible that, that the average person has so much control of the government's rules? So they began bringing in uh, anti-union propaganda into the media. They said, you know, we can buy the media. The media is for sale. So they started putting millions of dollars into the media to tell you how bad unions were. And over the course of a long period of time, people started buying that. So that they, they've they been fostering this thing about um, how government is the problem. Government is the problem that the free market capitalism is the only way, the perfect system to go. And the people who really benefit from that the most are the wealthy. And so what we're seeing now is that the, what we saw, you know, and inevitably happens throughout history is that fewer and fewer people are getting more and more of the money. And at the same time, they're now starting to get more and more of the government control. They, you know, with a Citizens United decision and the Supreme Court and everything, just giving away to the rich and taking away from everybody else. And what's happening, well, this, there is a problem, too, with, uh, with socialism in the, in the government, too, which, which was a good point that Ronald Reagan made, is that the government becomes top-heavy after a while. Well, you know, in in a capitalist system where there's a, where the where there's a open capitalist system where there's a lot of competitors and you know there's a free market, there's something called creative destruction that occurs in the capitalist system. So that like a, a big company that's been around a long time, what they do is they pile up their bureaucracy within that company, and they become less efficient. So that uh, the new companies will come along and not have as many middle management and not have as many rules and not have as many contracts that restrict them and so forth. And they're leaner and meaner, and they're able to out-compete those old companies with the big bureaucracies, and they put the old companies out of business in many cases, or the old companies have to do what they call creative destruction. They have to reorganize their entire company, lay a bunch of people off, and 
and become leaner and meaner themselves, or they don't survive. Well, that happens in capitalism because everybody's trying to buy the cheapest product, and the cheapest product comes from those companies that did that. 